okay? Hello. Say what's up, dude? He said a little early. This is my son. For anybody who doesn't know, we brought him here to help out, learn how to work. And today, we're playing switchgrass. the cove that we cut out a few weeks ago um like i said if i haven't already linked it link is up up there one of these places up above <laughs> it's gonna be there so a few weeks ago we um you saw us bring in a tree saw and cut out a bunch of nasty old just terrible habitat with a tree saw. locust trees coffee Cop bean hackberry it yeah. was a mess a bunch of stuff and we came yeah. in last week i updated on facebook if you're not following us on facebook be sure to follow like us it, on Facebook. Please. Yeah, be sure to. Thank you. If you're not. We love you guys. We love you anyway, but you, you need to just go ahead and follow us. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> updated it. We came in here and we cleaned all this out. But today we're here to plant the switchgrass. I wanted to be sure to talk about why I chose switchgrass in this cove. And the reason why is because this cove is really prone to, fl to flooding. I mean, it's not really prone, but it's been known to flood. The rest of this, this upper field here doesn't. And this was turned back to timber uh, years ago because when we get a, a ton of rain and can, what would be considered a huge flood or a big flood, this does get underwater. Yeah, I, I hunt alongside a big creek and so when it has water year round. So yep. when we get a lot of water, naturally it's gonna flood. And switchgrass is a lot more resilient to flooding than their bedding in a bag variety. So that's why I chose switchgrass. And a lot of people are against a monoculture and they say that switchgrass in itself would be monoculture. I'm not really too worried about that in here because I have a good variety of bedding um, habitats. Mm -hmm. And I don't, one thing I really don't have is grass. So I'm not really worried about one acre of grass being a monoculture, to, yeah. be, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so we're on the tail end of when you want to frost seed, but next week we're supposed to get rain tomorrow and i think another day next week next week two days and then we're supposed to be getting down below freezing a few of those days next week also yep. so what that leads to is the stratification of switchgrass uh, the bedding in a bag consists of indian grass big blue stem and switchgrass uh, the big blue and the indian does not require the stratification process near that the uh, switchgrass does switchgrass is a hard very small seed um, unlike the the big blue and the Indian, um, it's a long, it's a soft, uh, it's a real soft seed. So the switchgrass has to have that freeze thaw action to uh, to, to break, break down seed. that the outer cell wall of the seed and cause the germination to take place. Yeah. So what we're going to do in the way that we're going to start the planting process, like I said, we came in and disc this up with a big disc. Yeah. So we have a cultipacker. You can honestly, uh, you can probably see behind us. We did like a little test run to see how it work and it looks really good. Looks so we're gonna great. cultipack the whole cove, then we're gonna broadcast it, recultipack it, and then we're gonna spray it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We'll be back in a minute explaining to you guys how to go about um, the herbicide process. Yep. So see you guys in a few. Here we go. All my son cares about is the tractors. What are we, we're gonna play with tractors is what we're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna be playing with tractors later today. So we forgot to talk about seed rate. Um, when you're broadcasting, you're gonna have a little bit higher seed rate than when you're um, drilling it. Yep. But, uh, what, the, what does the site say? Three to five pounds Three per to acre. five, the suggested seed rate uh, for, that Real World says on, instru on to do is, is three to five pounds acre so we're gonna go with four this is really good fertile uh, creek bottom soil um, three pounds would be probably the drill rate uh, five would be a you know for th this plot is pr is prepped I mean this is this is as good as it gets yeah this is as good as it gets for the the broadcast uh, scenario and you want to be careful not to overseed it because you don't want it to be so 
thick and dense that nothing's going to use it. Yeah, it's going to. Um, you don't want you want animals to be able to, to travel through it, you know, with ease. Yet you want it to obviously give cover uh, and thermal cover as well. And also, if you plant too high of a rate, then you're it's going to be competing against itself and will not get as tall. Yeah, you'll have stunted growth. So yeah. we wanted to. We're going with four. Base it off of your own scenario, what you decide to go with um, on your on your property, on your farm, where you're planting it. But uh, we're going with four. We're getting ready to broadcast now. We just finished cult packing it. It looks amazing. Let me give you guys a shot real quick. Looks amazing. I mean, it really couldn't look much better. So, yeah. on you, uh, one last thing I will mention: uh, where you're at determines also a lot. Uh, your planting instructions. Your planting instructions will remain about the same but the, the finer details of exact seed rates and whatnot and, and uh, chemicals that are best for your region. Um, contact your local conservation officer, yeah, your county extension, your county extension office, uh, just you know, check with your local guys that know their stuff, yeah. um, just to double check and make sure. And they're, I mean, ours, I got off the phone with ours earlier just to double check on a herbicide rate. So and they're, they're, it's their job, they're more than willing to help. And it's always good to get advice because, you know, it's just, we want to do this right. Yeah, that's actually really important. Uh, don't just base your herbicide and all your stuff based off of what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, you know, check your region, check your area. Like you said, check with your county extension agent. That way, yours is as good as it can possibly be in your yeah. area. So. If you're doing it on a farm uh, that that you know you don't own, that say you're doing this on a on a property that somebody else owns, you know, check with the farmer, check with the landowner, and make sure that this. And that this isn't going to harm his crops because if this is this what we have we have wheat next to this I'm not concerned I farm this field here I'm not concerned about uh, drift drift is a big thing when it comes to, yeah. to chemical yeah. uh, if we've got a strong wind when we're spraying this and I've got a crop over here that is not uh, susceptible and, and uh, tolerant of the herbicide we're using on our grass I could very easily injure this crop and you don't want to do that it's bad for relations and it's not it's not good it's not good habitat uh, management yeah for sure so. it's, yeah, if it's not yours always check with what you're doing and yep. double check everything with the landowner or the farmer luckily mine's right here luckily, Aaron looked luckily. out so yeah it's a joint pro process yeah all right luckily he likes grass as much as I do time to plant be time to spray um our pump went out yeah this is real deal stuff that's how it happens sometimes so josh is going to come back tomorrow we're actually going to be no-tilling his and nothing comes out so this is where it should be coming out obviously there's nothing coming out or i'd be soaked so uh josh is going to come back tomorrow and while he's spraying his plots he's going to swing by here either or not plots grab a new well my grass spraying his grass. grass yeah he's going to come back here and spray either this I, I either got to get a new pump or open this one up see what's going on inside so so and we're, real life stuff yeah we have too much stuff to do today to worry about fixing it today so we're going to come back josh will come back tomorrow and spray it down for me so yeah um I got a frosty clover now. <laughs> it feels weird saying frosty clover when it's like 70 and degrees outside. we're in t-shirts. But uh, like, I said, we're, like I said earlier, we're at the very end of um, the period for for doing frost seeding. So we're gonna go hit that up but right now. But the weather next week is conducive for it. This is Kansas, so. Yeah. All right, on to frost seeding clover. See you guys. Jerry and Aiden in the back, and we're gonna frost seed into this food plot. You might remember last year, Actually, one of our first vlogs last year, we were talking about this food plot. So, really, um, it, the clover took on half of this food plot. The other half is the pretty much half. just wheat. Yeah, where the sun was hitting last year. There's a tree. You can kind of see it behind me. Let's you should it. be able to see it really good behind me. <laughs> it blocked a lot of sun. So we um, 
I killed it. We gave the Tordon bath last year. It, it, there's enough Tordon in that stump to kill every tree for 30 yards. So yeah, we're gonna keep an eye on it and make sure it's dead, but hopefully we killed it and we're gonna get, we're gonna get more sunlight in this plot and hopefully that'll help with getting the clover to, to take in this plot. So um, I hunted this stand behind me a lot last year. Well, a couple times last year. Saw some good movement. There was, it's a really good spot, really excited what we're gonna do. We're gonna get to frost seeding. Um, clover and chicory is the, the real world clover and chicory. Had success with it yeah. everywhere that it's taken because of if, if there was sun, it took really well. So that's the plan. We're gonna get to action right now. Just finished up, Josh headed out. We're gonna do some work on his farm. But Frosty, this is actually more clover that took than we thought it had. Um, so, looks pretty good. I had a, an old clover plot that I planted four years ago. Yeah, in the timber over there. I think two, three years ago, something like that. And had some patchiness in it and had some holes. So I decided to go ahead and frost seed a little bit of the remainder in there just to give the food the deer a little bit more food but so i ran and did that real quick um now we're done though like i said head out to do another project this project is complete peace